Hi, my name is Teddy Hess, and I run the customer experience team here at Ladder. We hear all the time, hey, how should I think about life insurance? This is our basics overview to help you out with that question. So what is term life insurance? In its most simplest form, term life insurance, and all life insurance for that matter, is actually a contract. And it's a contract that stipulates that you will give the insurance company a small premium, a small amount of money each month, and if you die, they will give your beneficiaries a large sum of money. So this is something for people who have people, for people who are depending on their income. It's for people with kids or for people with aging parents. And it's to help to make sure that they can stay in that home or that they can use that money to ensure that their kids go to college. There are a bunch of uses that you can have with a life insurance policy, but it's for people with people. Let's go over some of the basic components of every life insurance policy. The first thing you need to know is how much you get. In the life insurance world, this is known as face amount. And face amount typically ranges from you know, a couple thousand dollars to a couple million dollars or more. And this is the amount of money that your beneficiaries get if you pass away. The second thing you need to know is how much you pay. And this is called premium in the life insurance world. Now, the premium is the small amount of money that you pay each month to the life insurance company. Think of it like a subscription, as in Netflix or Spotify, something like that. The third thing to keep in mind is how long it lasts. In general, it can last for a specified period of time, or it can last until you die no matter what. Think of this as term length. That's what they call it in the business. These are the basic components of the life insurance policy that you need to understand in order to make a good decision. With that in mind, it's also important to know there are two types. And they have similarities, but also some pretty important differences to note. The first type is term. Term is really simple, so we'll attack that first. <clears throat> the second type is called permanent. So starting with term, term life insurance is a type of policy that lasts for a specific duration, maybe 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And if you die between that period, let's say in this case, uh, before the 30th year, if you die in here, your family will receive that benefit. However, if you die out here in year 35, year 31, your family will get nothing. Now, this is a really good policy for people who look at their life and look at their financial future and say, hey, there is a period in here where my family is financially at risk. I'm saving money for college, I'm paying off that mortgage, and if I was to pass away prematurely, it would have a pretty big catastrophic risk on my family. And they recognize that this is temporary and at some point, Kids will graduate and be on their own. The home will be paid off. This is a great policy for helping with that. And because it is for this short duration, it's also the most affordable way to get life insurance coverage. Think of it as small dollars, and you're going to have the most efficient return for your money. So when you think about term life insurance, I want you to have these words in your head. I want you to say pure life insurance. That's all it does. It helps you and it helps your people replace your income if you're gone. That's the first thing. Moving on to permanent life insurance, there are some pretty big differences between permanent and term. The first is that it doesn't end, or it lasts until you die. So what that means in practice is it's actually up to 10 times more expensive. So instead of having small monthly payments, you have big monthly payments. The other thing to keep in mind is there's also this savings or investment component, which we hope, obviously, goes up and to the right. And because of that, that's also baked into the price and why it's so expensive. Now, what's important for consumers to know is because it has this investment component, you really need to do your research and understand the fees and the commissions around this policy to make sure you're getting a good return for your investment. So quick recap, when you think about permanent life insurance, think investment plus life insurance. It has a double function. Now, 
Let's put these two and let's play them out in an example and see what that practically means for us. So we're going to pretend we have a 35 year old male living in Denver, two kids, decent salary, and let's just go with like minimal savings and minimal debt. He's in a pretty good place. And his goal is he wants to make sure that if he passes away, the home is paid off, his kids get to go to college, and he wants his wife to be able to retire nice. She is an avid golfer, so you know, let's just pretend she likes to do that. Now, he's 35 and he thinks when he is 55, he'll have paid off his money for the home, his kids will be in college and independent, and he'll pretty much have saved what he needs to. Or at least his, his premature death won't be financially catastrophic for his family. So what that means is starting at age 35 all the way to age 55, he'll be covered. So this is that, let's go this 20 year term. He's gonna go with a million dollar face amount. And for example's sake, we're looking about $45 a month. Now, if he dies in here, let's say at age 45, his family will have that million dollars to pay off the rest of the home, save some for college, and then his wife can use some of that to retire on. The term policy did its job. Now let's say he gets to age 56. Well, first off, great. He's alive, that's worth celebrating. But also, the term policy did its job. And the reason I say that is because in this period, when he was raising, uh, raising money, saving money, paying off the home, saving for the children's education, his family was protected and they had the assurity that if something happened to him, all these things could still happen. And he was able to do it for a very reasonable price over the life of that policy. Now, if we look at a whole life policy or a permanent policy, getting a little low on the board here, we're gonna call it perm for now, it's a little bit of a different situation. He has, he's still 35, However, his policy is in place for the whole time. So we have an infinite term length. We're gonna go with that million dollar coverage. And most likely that premium is gonna be 10X. So we're looking at something like 450 a month, which adds up to a lot over the course of the year. Now, if he dies uh, before 55, he'll get that million dollar benefit. If he dies after 55, his family will still get that benefit. Now the important thing to note, because this have a, has a saving component, each year the savings is slowly growing in here. And that's part of the reason why it's so expensive. Now another thing to note is our friend, if he makes it past 55, we know based on his good financial planning that he's taking care of the home, he's taking care of the kid's education, and most likely he has enough money to retire on. Now, the situation is he still has to continue paying premiums on this permanent life policy. So he has to pay them through 65, through 75, hopefully through 85, and we surely hope through 95, all the while he's spending more and more into this policy. Now, it's important for consumers to think about, if I'm gonna be investing this much over the long term, what are the investment rates of return that I'm guaranteed or promised, and also what are the fees that I'm being charged? That's just a responsible way to look at something that you're gonna be investing your money in. So, this is a quick overview of the two ways that these two policies can help you meet your goals. And we recommend, no matter what, that you do your research and understand what is your goal for the policy. And does the policy that you're looking at, whether it be term or permanent, align with that goal?